Hello everyone, and welcome to this third episode of The Gentleman Reviewer, where today I'll be talking about the Pilot Metropolitan. I know this is a pen that's commonly reviewed across a variety of blogs that review fountain pens or pens or anything that has to do with stationery. However, the reason that I wanted to review it today is it's the fountain pen that actually got me back into fountain pens. So let me tell you a little bit about that. My first ever fountain pen was this Cross Bailey. I got it, I think it was five or six years ago, um, and I had no idea about nib sizes. So as you've seen in maybe some of my Instagram posts where I'm posting quotes of the day, stuff like that, I have fairly small handwriting. I'm actually writing a little bit bigger in those than I normally would. And with this Cross Bailey, I bought a medium nib. So that's fine, that's what a lot of people use, it's pretty common. Um, when the Pilot Metropolitan came out, that was all that they had available. Um, but given that I have small handwriting, my handwriting was blotchy. Um, some of my, you couldn't even read my handwriting really because it was just all closed. My O's were just like a big dot and I really didn't enjoy it. I really wanted to like it. I really wanted to like the fountain pen. Um, it is a good pen, another good entry level pen, but given that I didn't know about nib sizes, I almost stopped with fountain pens altogether. So about five years after that, when I graduated with my, with my master's degree, my family bought me the Pilot Metropolitan as a gift um, because I wanted a fountain pen. And that turned everything around. So I decided, I researched the nibs a little bit more, found that there are different nib sizes, found that they have a fine, which in the Japanese size for the nibs, it's it writes very, very small. A little bit smaller than, say, a Pilot G2 maybe, I think. I'll do a comparison to that on some of the other papers a little bit later in the video. Um, yeah, so this is the pen that got me back into fountain pens. So I wanted to, I wanted to do a review of it today. So, a little bit about the pen, some of the dimensions. So, it's, it's a very sleek pen. I mean, it's like a cigar or a submarine. Very, very simple. This one in particular, if you can see the design, is the, I think it's the crocodile or alligator skin. I don't know, I just didn't want plain black. And as far as the animal collection goes, it wasn't the worst one. I think the purple leopard is a little odd. But luckily, if you want purple, they have one in their retro collection that looks pretty cool. Actually, this is my wife's pen, but this is the purple one. As you can see, it's not leopard. I don't know what it is. It looks like just O's. Um, and she also does have a green one as well. So we, we've got three of those between the three of us. Um, she's really liked it. She's used it in a variety of journals and has found that it works very well. Um, she mostly uses the Pilot Hiroshizuku Kanpeki in both of those pens and finds that it works very well in these pens. So for this review and what I've been doing on a lot of my Instagram posts, I've been using the Waterman Paris in it, and I've found that it writes it writes very well across a variety of papers. It does write fairly wet, however, it doesn't bleed very much or feather very much through the paper. Um, some of the notes that I have right here, and I'll use this paper later. I mean, looking at the back, I mean you can see it's not bleeding through this paper. So I'm a little all over the place. So let's get back to the actual pen. So the pen itself is lacquered cover steel, covered steel, so it gives it a very, very smooth and a little bit of a weighty finish. Um, it's not very shiny, but it is pretty sleek and it does feel very smooth, but it is grippy, like it's not going to slip out of your hands if your hands are wet. Um, so the grip itself right here is a resin material, um, and that's another thing that I find interesting that is pretty grippy. Even when I've been writing for a while, and you know my hands get a little bit slippery or maybe they're a little wet from sweat but it, it still grips very well one thing that some some reviewers posted that they don't like is that step down right here from the body onto the grip for if they grip their pens pretty high I don't grip mine very high I actually end up gripping it somewhat like that to where I get ink on my finger sometimes and I've been trying to pull it back but if you grip it down here on the body a little bit closer to the nib, that notch right there, that big step, isn't too much of an issue. Um, the nib itself is made of steel. Hopefully that focuses to where you can see it really well. It's a very, very simple design. Um, this is, a, like I said before, it's a fine nib. It's a Japanese fine, so it's very, very small. A lot smaller than you'd see on a Lamy Safari. Extra fine, actually. 
Um, I don't have my Safari inked up, otherwise I'd do a comparison for you guys. Maybe I'll link it up when I pull it to the, pull it to the paper, I'll at least dip it for you. <clears throat> so the pen itself, when it's capped, it's about 5.4 inches long, so it's a pretty decent sized pen. I'd say somewhere around the average length. And then when you post it, it goes to about 6 inches. This pen writes well both posted and unposted, so I find that when I'm just doing little notes here and there, I'll keep it, I'll just hold the cap in my other hand and write. When I'm doing the quotes, I'll usually post it because I'm writing for a little bit longer, because I'm taking my time to make the letters look decent. They don't look great yet, but I'm practicing. Some of the reviews that I found that were a little bit older say that the pen rattles when it's posted. As you can see, you're not hearing any rattling unless you can hear the converter inside with the little ink agitator in it. Um, and it does grip very well. I mean, it's not gonna fall off of it, but it does come off pretty easily. So let me show you what it looks like on the inside. So I have the pilot converter in there. And again, you can see that it's got, oh, it's about half full of ink. I find that the pen does seem to dry out fairly quickly. Not dry out, but the ink tends to get used fairly quickly, um, usually within a couple days, but if you're writing a lot, you might be filling your pen up once, maybe twice a day. So that is something to take in, into consideration if you're using your pens quite a bit. You might want something with a little bit more capacity. I haven't used the squeeze converter that it comes with, mostly because I bought this uh, twist converter and I haven't used any of the cartridges in this one yet. And I don't think I will. I don't tend to like cartridges. Um, I think the the cross pen kind of turned me off to those because, you know, I'd, I'd fill it up, I'd put the the, or the cartridge in this one, and within two days it would be empty, even if I wasn't writing. The, it wouldn't spill ink anywhere. I don't know what was going on. Um, I might do a review of this pen and try to use it a little bit more, maybe with my trying to practice cursive so it gets a little bit bigger, but that's a different video. So as far as pen selection goes, this, does, this pen does have quite a wide variety of what you can get for it. I think the, there's only three nib sizes that I, can, that I could find. Um, there might be more out there, but fine, medium, and a one millimeter stub. So the fine, I think it, if I have the numbers right in my head, I don't have the notes with me right now, um, but it's on my blog post if you head over and check that out. I'll try to remember to include a link in the video. I think it is equivalent to a 0.5 or a 0.38 um, rollerball pen, whereas the medium is equivalent to a 0.7 uh, ballpoint pen, and then the one millimeter stub, obviously it's one millimeter. So that doesn't really have too much variation in it. And then there's 16 colors available. So like I said, I only have three of them here, and these two are my wife's. Uh, but there is a plain black one, a plain silver, um, different animal prints if you like those. There's a python, the purple leopard if that's your thing. Definitely not my thing. I do like the purple though. Um, and the green is a pretty cool green too for the retro collections. These are both from the retro collection. Uh, and this is from the animal. But those are my thoughts. So let me get over to, let me change the camera around and I'll, I'll do a writing sample for you guys across a couple different types of paper. Um, especially paper that you know your average college student might run into because I feel like that's about the time that a lot of people start getting into fountain pens and you know we're not gonna I still don't even want to spend that much money on say a Rhodia or some of the other or like a Loistrom 1917 journal for me that's just not reasonable at this point I'll be getting those here in a little bit and I might I don't know if I'll review them because those are pretty common but so yeah, let me head over to um, a couple different pads of paper for you guys and we'll do a writing sample. I'll also get a Pilot G2 since that's what I'm sure most of you are familiar with and so I can show you the comparison of the line width for that. All right, so I'll see you guys on the other side. Thank you. All right, everybody, welcome back to the writing sample part. Like I said, I'm gonna be taking you guys across a couple varieties of paper just because some of the pens write better on certain types of paper than others. Some of the inks do as well. In my last video, I, or the, sorry, not my last video, the Lamy Safari, I did this as well. And again, the reason that I do it is because most of us don't want to go buy a Rhodia or use those pieces of paper just for a, like a, 
I don't know, a grocery list or something like that. And we're going to probably pull out our no brand notepad that we just bought from Walmart or some kind of similar store. So again, this is just a no, no brand piece of paper that I got from in a bulk pack on Walmart. And I'm going to start out by um, writing out, let's say, Sorry about the shading, I still don't have the light set up the way I need them to. But as you can see, this does write pretty well on this paper. You can see no feathering on it at all. Let me pull out the Pilot G2, just so you can see. Um, it's a new one, so it might take a minute to actually start working. So as a comparison, the Pilot G2, they're actually pretty similar in uh, line width. I think the Pilot G2 is just a little bit, little bit thinner than the Pilot Metropolitan. And just for the sake of consistency, here is a, a Rotring 600. So you can see lead, lead width. So that's a 0.5. The Pilot G2 is a 0.5. And the Pilot Metropolitan is a fine... Um, is a fine nib, a Japanese fine nib, so it's very, very fine. So let me pull out the, I did this on the last one, my Dayminder, it's the 2018 one. Let me pull it out to the back so you guys don't see my my plans for, for that. So I did it, this with the Lamy right here, if you guys can see that pretty well. Uh, let me try to get this turned down a little bit more so it's a little bit flatter. So let's try this. It's going to feather a lot. I've tried to use this before on this one, but... Actually, this time it did okay. You can see on the pilot part, compared to the Lamy, it still looks like it feathers a lot. The line is a lot thicker on this than it was on that other piece of paper. And yeah, so I just don't... I don't use it in this. You can also see, even with my um, highlighting, you can see that it bled through pretty well. So not not the best pen for a planner, especially if you're if if you don't want bleed through, which I don't know about you guys, but I really don't want on my planner. So I'm gonna quickly go through a couple other pieces of paper. This is just loose leaf lined paper that I've had for years. It might have been back in high school, so ooh, that was a long time ago. I don't want to do math right now, so um whoop, I almost spelled it wrong. I did spell it wrong. I am a terrible speller. So again, it works well on that one. And this is just, again, you could buy, I think it's a pack of 150 for pages for just a dollar, maybe a dollar 50, or maybe that was back in high school. So the price probably went up by now, but it's a, no feathering on this one. Again, just loose, loose leaf paper. Here's some loose leaf grid paper. Again, probably something you can get at Walmart for a dollar, a dollar 50. Whoop. I don't know how well you can see that, but again, no feathering. Um, let's see, this does have, if you do that, then it doesn't, doesn't dry very quickly. But let's try to give it five seconds and see how well it does on this paper. Two. Okay. Oh, yeah, it dries pretty quickly. I should do that on all my papers, but I won't pull it back right now. Here's another, this is just a, old notebook. I did this with the Lamy Safari in my last video. Just haven't changed it out. So let's see how it does on this one. Does well. So again, it, it's, it might be the ink, it might be the pen, it might be the paper, but this one does. Ooh, I've got one more notebook actually. Just your general composition book that you can get from, from Walmart. It looks like I did the Lamy on this one as well. These are ones that around the, the start of the school year, they run for about 50 cents for one and you get um, 100 sheets. It's 200 pages. This would be, it's a little big for a bullet journal. I'm, I currently started bullet journaling and I'm using one of these and it's all right. I mean, I'll probably want a smaller one, like an A5 size. So this one, I've used it quite a bit in here. Um, works well. No problems at all. No feathering, no variation in line with. Um, again, I'm just using the Waterman ink. So this is pretty good. It's, it's very cheap. I think this runs maybe six to eight dollars, somewhere along that range. Um, but it's, 
It's very good ink. It does feather on a lot of different types of paper though. Uh, but as you can see with this variety that you're gonna commonly run across when you're first starting out and you're not looking at buying the journals or the nice Rhodia Loistrum or any of the other fancy paper brands, this will work really well for a wide variety of paper. So thank you all for watching. I hope you liked the video. Um, please like and subscribe if you would to help me grow my channel. Also, I'll try to remember to include a link to the written review where I have a little bit more writing samples. I included a couple pictures of the cursive that I'm trying to work on by posting a quote each day to Instagram. Um, I'm just the gentle gentleman reviewer on Instagram. Uh, gentleman, R-E-V-I-E, one on Twitter. I guess someone already had gentleman review, so I had to do the one. But um, check me out on those channels. I'll try to remember to include a link of those as well. Um, but leave your thoughts below about what you think about the pen or what you think about my review. Thank you all, and I hope you have a great weekend.